Well, this is up at Lake Levon. This is where our boat was in that first slip right there, and it is all dried up. It looks like something out of a scientific movie. Holy cow, look at that. About to cover the sun, too. Look at that. Wow, it's like, it's like cool, but creepy. Heat and little rainfall have parched Texas for the last year, making it, in the words of state climatologist John Nielsen Gammon, the worst one-year drought in Texas history. This is really the first time when, when climate change, um, the impact of climate change has manifested itself in a tangible way uh, within the state of Texas. The 2011 Texas drought is setting records at an alarming rate, costing farmers and ranchers billions. All of our input costs have just gone through the roof on everything that the agricultural people do, whether it be farmers or ranchers or hay haulers. Everybody is in a, in a real problem out now. In mid-August, TFB leaders, along with representatives from other agriculture organizations, met with U.S. Senator John Cornyn in Lampasas to brief him on the Texas drought conditions. So we actually had State climatologist Dr. John Nielsen Gammon also presented his findings and forecast. It's the worst one year drought ever. There have been uh, droughts in the past that have uh, lasted longer, like the 1950s drought. But in terms of uh, the records we're setting, we have just had the driest 10 months on record. We've just had the warmest month on record as well. So it's, it's pretty intense right now. Dr. Nielsen Gammon produced a chart on his blog showing the relative warmth and dryness of Texas summers, including the dry, hot years of the Dust Bowl era. 2011 stands well apart from the historical record. Texas livestock herds are rapidly disappearing. Cattle numbers are lower now than at any point since the 1950s. Texas farmers and ranchers have once again learned the harsh lesson that it matters little how high crop prices go if there is nothing to sell. Much of the income in Texas row crop agriculture this year will likely come from the farm safety net, so many seem eager to dismantle. We want to make sure that these safety net programs for farmers and ranchers don't go away as a result of the budget cuts that we know are coming. Everybody's going to have to sacrifice some, but we can't uh, eliminate those in light of these extraordinary events like this drought. Changes in extreme events like the ones we've seen this year are expected behavior. Uh, they're not things that are a great surprise to us. And we expect to see more of the same, more heat waves, um, more intense downpours in the future as the average climate changes. The future outlook is bleak at best. Dr. Nielsen Gammon says there is a 50-50 chance of another La Nina developing. That was the trigger for the current drought, which means the odds are we'll have a drier than normal winter again this year. Depending on what happens in September, October, where we do have decent rains in the state. We often have floods in September or October, so we could have some relief from the drought. If that doesn't happen, and if a La Nina sets up, we're looking at serious drought conditions extending through next summer. Weather forecaster says the global weather, normally known as La Nina, has made an unexpected return. If a La Nina sets up, we're looking at serious drought conditions extending through next summer. It's caused by lower than average ocean surface temperatures and is likely to strengthen throughout the year and continue into the northern hemisphere during 2012. That's likely to have a significant global impact, including a worsening of the current drought in the Horn of Africa. It could also cause widespread flooding in parts of Southeast Asia, South Africa and Australia. Dr. Jerry Meal is the senior scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder. He says our warming planet makes extreme weather events more likely. As greenhouse gases created by burning fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal alter the climate. Just as steroids make the baseball player stronger and increases chances of hitting home runs, the uh, greenhouse gases are the steroids of the climate system. They increase the chances of record-breaking heat to occur compared to record-breaking coal. If the climate weren't changing, the ratio would be one record hot day to one record cold day. Neil says we saw two record hot days for every record cold day in the last decade, and this year we are on a three-to-one pace. And we just started keeping track in the model 
for all the different uh, grid points in the model across the U.S. what this ratio uh, would be. And as the climate continued to warm, this ratio continued to grow. In other words, you kept having more and more record high maximum temperatures, fewer and fewer record low minimum temperatures. So by the mid-21st century, this ratio, which is now about 2 to 1, was about 20 to 1. By the end of the century, with this continued warming and this continued change in the distribution of uh, records, the ratio is about 50 to 1. Dallas has had 63 days, I think, so far this year, over 100, and this just isn't 101. These are temperatures like 105 or 107 or 108. Um, over the longer term, uh, the biggest driver of climate change is greenhouse gases. And the model projections for what's going to happen out toward the middle of the century say that normal temperatures are going to be increasing by anywhere from two to five and a half degrees by the middle part of the century. The summer we had in 2009 in, in South Texas, and it was unusually hot in 2010 in North Texas, those, are, those temperatures were about four degrees above average. So that's what we're talking about in terms of a normal summer uh, in another few decades. And of course, there'll be cooler summers than that, and also warmer summers. So it looks like we're heading toward uh, temperatures that we really haven't seen in the past in Texas. And what we find is that many regions of the globe are likely to uh, experience this permanent emergence of extreme heat uh, over the next four to five decades.